Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs project. Okay, so this one has been around, the template has been around forever. And it actually was my favorite template up until recently when the storage pods kind of dethroned it. It's my box bag. It looks like a house and it comes in three different sizes. This box bag template makes boxes and it makes bags. This guy here didn't make this. This one was made from this little guy, but this gives you a box. And you can see there are four points that come together. That's basically where we're gonna be joining. And the project we're doing today is gonna to be very similar to this one. Those four points come together here. This is a small template. This doesn't have a size on it because this was the first template that I came out with. So I just call it the box bag. So box bag, box bag small. And then my most recent video on this template was when I showed how to do these guys here. This is the bag. So this, right here you can see is the shape of the house and that's the large template that I have over here monkeys kind of in front of it this guy here is my large box bag now I've got fussy cut frames in front and I'll show you the fussy cutting later on because the project we're doing today will lend itself really well to fussy cutting depending on your fabric so the template that I'm showing you today is the box bag that makes boxes and it makes bags but we're gonna make another bag a drawstring bag. This drawstring bag, you might be able to see here in the center of Fussy Cut, when I flip this to the bottom, you can see those four points coming together. But instead of it being straight on the sides, I've got it angled because we've added a drawstring there. And what I love about this is that I've used two different fabrics. You can use four fabrics, you can use one fabric, it's totally up to you. And how you choose to do your lining is up to you as well. You can see here I've used, it's hard to tell, but I've used one batik there and a different batik over here. This batik and that batik, they're both the same. Let's see here, I'm gonna take these out. You know, I don't crochet, I don't knit, but I imagine if I did, this would be a really great bag drawstring bag to put those stuff in those things in all my tools so this guy here as a drawstring bag when it's open it lets you really see what it is you're featuring Tula Pink's fabric that I have here, but when you use the drawstring, it becomes a really great bag to travel with. And you can take this with you as you go when you're on the road. So it can become your purse, it can become whatever. And depending on what you put in here, and depending on also the interfacing that you use, I'll show you a couple different options that I recommend. You know, this in the center may be featured more than another. And you can see on the sides, I've chosen on the sides to use a fabric also that could have been fussy cutted. Let's see if I can get this to a point where you can see it. Can you see the other tulip pink that really is nice for fussy cutting? This guy here, I chose not to feature it. Whatever you put in the center right here, that's what's going to be featured when you're looking at this. And this is just kind of a side effect here. So if you've got fabrics that you really love, you may not want to have them on the side. I like the idea of those glasses and the eyes. Well, they're not really glasses, but the, the eyes and the glasses made out of scissors, that kind of thing. You know, they show when you've got this closed. So this becomes a really cute drawstring bag. Okay, so this drawstring bag was made from the regular size. And the template really goes like this down rather than this when we're making this project, when we're making the box. So the regular size. This is the small size. And you can see, again, I've featured the dog here. The dog was just an overall pattern, so I wanted to make sure to get the dog's face in here. There are a couple dogs here on the side. Again, I fussy cut, and I'll show you how we do that a little bit later on. And then that one I chose to do a little bit differently. But you can see on the bottom how those four points come together too. And this was made from the small. So the small box bag, this guy goes this way when we cut this way when we cut so those points come together and then I made the large and the large is huge so this could actually be like a nice little travel bag now I put a different interfacing in here than I did on these two so you could and when I tighten this up it's really tight because not only did I use more interfacing here but I did too in the drawstring but this could become an overnight bag this could be a travel bag this could be a carry all of your goodies with you because look how huge that opening is so this came from the large 
template. And again, you can see on the bottom how those four points put together came to, to, to be together at the bottom there. And again, you choose what fabric it is that you want to fussy cut. I didn't fussy cut anything here. I just used a pattern that had some quilt blocks. I could have stitched or quilted down here and made it look like I had pieced those. So there's a lot of possibilities with this. Okay, so I want to show you template wise and fabric wise what it is you're going to be doing with these guys. All right, so I'm going to use the regular size here and we're going to do a more boyish theme today. Doesn't have to be a boy. I love to shark dive. I used to shark dive all the time. And so I decided to use sharks. But this might be a really cool thing for a boy and his toys and all those kinds of things. I've gone ahead and cut out two of my shark fabrics and I put SF101 on the back. And then I cut out two more fabrics coordinating so that I can have basically this on the front, this on the side. On the other side, we're basically going to have this over here. So this is going to wrap around and then this would go on the back side. I wanted this to be the feature and this to be the accent. You'll see when we get it all put together how it does come together. And then inside I used a polka dot, gray polka dot, just to kind of pick up on the sharks. The other reason I like gray is you can see inside the bag a little bit better. It's also going to get dirty, so any fabrics you use here, if you are going to wash this, you want to make sure that you use a cotton or anything that can be washable. I used SF101 on the back as well. I'm going to make one and then we'll go over materials, fussy cutting, those kinds of things because I want you to be able to see how quick this comes together. And we're going to be doing basically the same thing as this here, except instead of here you can see I added the fur and I made this a little bit taller to wrap over. We're going to be adding a drawstring on there. So that guy there, this is the same process that we're using to make these. So if you haven't seen any of the videos that I did before on making boxes with the box bag, you can go watch those, but it's basically going to be the same thing too. All right, I have four layers of fabric. I have not fused the interfacing on the back just because I didn't want to, but I would recommend that you go ahead and fuse your interfacing on the back side. SF101 on here with your four layers of fabric and the four layers of SF101, our rotary cutter is going to be able to cut through all of that. So I've got fabric that doesn't have a direction. You can see right here I've got my selvage. I want to make sure when I place this on that I've got my fabric folded. You see how that's not going to work there? So I want to make sure to fold my fabric or just go ahead and cut off that selvage so we don't even have to worry about it because I want to use as little fabric as possible to be economical, but also just because I want to use the fabric for other things. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. And now when we fold in half and in half again, I'll get a truer look at my fabrics. This template, the regular size template that we're using here is really fabric friendly. All of these, I shouldn't say all the large, not so much, but the regular size and the small size, this is the regular, this is a small size. They're really fat quarter friendly and they're scrap friendly too. You can see right here, I've got a crease in there. So I would press that out first. But when you look to see what I've got right now, I am just barely there. And when I tested this earlier this morning, I thought I had enough fabric for me to be able to do this. So I think, oh, there's a fold in there. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, just to be sure, is I'll press this here, just do a little finger press, and then make sure that everything is lying down nice and flat and make sure I've got all of that pressed out just with my fingers. And now you can see I'm just barely on there. And I'm just barely there. I want to look through all my layers and make sure that I've got enough. Now, remember, that's going to be my seam allowance for the drawstring, and that's going to be where they all join together. Okay, so I want you to pretend that I have four layers of fabric with the four layers of SF101 already pressed on there. And if you know my templates, then you know the no-slip material. This guy here, it's either brown, tan, or it's either gray. They both work the same. You can see that one's tan. I've got a gray one somewhere here. They both work the same. That's our no slip material. Basically what we're gonna do is cut and turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut 
turn my template. And when I go to cut here, that point is just barely on there, but that allows me to cut out all of these. And there is just my little bit that's left there. So I would be able to cut all of those out and now start working on this. I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna start looking at how we're gonna lay this out. All right, so our lining, we're gonna put aside for a minute. We're gonna use these two and I wanna grab over this fabric as well. This is gonna be part of our drawstring and we are making the regular size. This is the small, this is the regular. And what I want you to think about is the width of the template. And then basically, if we look over here, this half minus two inches or so. So basically, one and a half widths of this template. So whatever template you're using, if you're using the regular size, the small size, or the large size, we basically want to cut this piece one and a half times this width. What we're going to be doing, and you'll see me do it, we're going to fold this side down, fold it down again, stitch, same thing over here, then we're going to fold in half again, and we're going to use this for the drawstring. Honestly, the width of the drawstring is just a personal preference. This one, I'm doing a little bit thinner, so you'll be able to see that there won't be as much showing here. What we want to think about is what this is here, how thick it is, and to be able to have two loops go through. You don't have to have two. I'm going to tighten this up. You don't have to have two, but it sure is nice to be able to tighten both ends and open that up. And I'll show you how we do that a little bit later on. All right, so I'm gonna put this fabric aside and this fabric is pretty stiff. I don't need to put an interfacing on here and I don't really want to put an interfacing if you're really gonna be using this as a drawstring bag. If you're gonna use this as a bag that stays open, that just has that cool look on the top, then you can put an interfacing on here and SF-101 would work real well for that. All right, let's put this aside for a minute. I've got my box bag. My, my box at Square It Place It templates out because way back when, and it wasn't way back when, but the last video that I did was on that blue bag that I showed you and I showed using the templates and using these guys here to do the box corners. We're gonna have a bag that has a boxed bottom, but it's gonna come naturally from the template itself. And again, you can see how much wider that is. All right, so we've got again, these guys here and these guys here, two of each. So do I want this to be the center or do I want this to be the center? If you've got an uh, embroidery machine or you have somebody that does monograms, or you want to do something special on here, then you can use this in the center and have their name embroidered. You can have their school logo, whatever it is, right there if you wanted to do that instead. And then the sharks would be on the side. And just kind of audition this and see what this would look like. So you can imagine this over here and this over here and that's what we're looking at here. And again, the only reason I would do that is if I'm gonna be featuring something here, embroidery or something else. I want this to be here and this one on the other side. So basically what we're gonna be doing is having this in the center on one side, this is the center on the other side. So the way that we do a box bag, whether it's a drawstring bag or whether it's this guy, is we're gonna sew roof to roof, roof to roof, and then we're gonna sew roofs to roofs. So those guys have been sewn together, these guys have been sewn together, and then we're gonna sew roof to roof. What I wanna think about when I'm doing this is this here, this here, this here, this here. So you can see how it would look like that. I don't wanna stitch by accident this. So when we get to where we've done the first set, we're gonna make sure that the second set is placed correctly. So if you wanna lay it out on the table like that, and you're gonna stitch these together here, and we're gonna stitch these together here, that's gonna help you out quite a bit. You can use pins or clips if you want to, I'm just gonna stitch. Now there are all kinds of trains of thought on this. You can start a quarter of an inch in if you're using a quarter inch seam allowance, and stop at a quarter inch. And then same thing when we go down here and over here, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna stitch from edge to edge. When I get to this side, I'm gonna stitch from edge to edge. So it's totally up to you, but this is a get or done project. It's a drawstring bag that's gonna be holding all kinds of goodies. So it's not gonna be you know, a beautiful quilt that's going into a quilt show. You guys know my goal is to get everything done quick and fast. Now I move these around 
on the table. So when I go to sew my second ones together, I'm going to have to go back and look at my layout. It's, it'll be a good kind of a reinforcement for you. I'm using my regular foot and about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I've got it at like a 2.4. Um, anywhere up to a 2.8 is fine. And I'm just holding in place versus back stitching. And again, I'm going to back stitch there. We're going to put this aside back to the table because again, I moved this. So I want to make sure when I place these two together that I've got this going this way and this one going this way. So what we want to do is sew those two together. So we're going to do this. Now you notice this fabric is directional. <gasps> do you see what I, oh yeah, oh, we're good. I thought I had cut it upside down. All of a sudden it was like, oh no, I did exactly what I didn't want you to do. Direction is going to be a big deal when we cut these out and we'll look at some directional fabrics later on. All right, so we're ready to stitch these two together here. We're doing our roofs, two roofs together, and in a minute we'll be uh, sewing four roofs together. All right, back to the table. And if you want to give this a good press, you can do that. You can also just press to one side, whichever direction. We're going to be sewing this together, this guy here, together with this. So we're going to be turning this way. And I like to start in the center. And if, again, if you wanted to press your seams, you can. I'm going to turn to one side and turn to the other side. And I'll grab a pin or a clip just to hold those in place. And I've got my cording down there. I like using shoestrings too. So when you're picking your cording, especially for a boys um, project, I don't have any more shoestrings. I've used them in all of my samples that I've been making. And <laughs> I think a shoestring would be really cute for this. So shoestrings you can get, you know, dollar stores, those kinds of places. All right, we're gonna sew. You notice what I've done. I pinned my roofs together. So my roof, to my roof that I've sewn, my roof to my roof, and now we're sewing roofs to roofs. And you can start in the center if you like. I'm gonna start right at the edge. And when I get right into the center, I'm just making sure that my fabric here is going that way and my fabric underneath is going in the opposite. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done. We basically created the bottom of this bag. Now we're gonna work on our sides. Doesn't matter which side you start with. We're gonna be, let me grab some scissors. We're gonna be sewing our four sides together. Now this is the outer fabric, so we're gonna sew all four sides together and not worry about leaving a lining opening. But when we do our lining, we are gonna do an opening there. All right, we're gonna stitch this side down. And again, if you wanted to stop at that quarter inch, you know, at, um, like some people do, then go right ahead. I'm just gonna start right there at the edge. And we're back stitching at the top. I'm gonna flip to the next side, line those up. And again, I'm not pinning, but you're welcome to pin if you are a new sewer. This is such an easy project and a successful project. Everybody that you make this for is going to love this. Just a fun, fun kind of a gift. And not only is it a great gift by itself, but stuff it full of goodies. If you've watched any of the videos that I've done or the Facebook Lives that I've done in the past where it was like great gifts to give, this is one of my favorite gifts to stuff with all kinds of goodies. If the real gift is a gift card or money of some kind, then make the small one. But if it's a bunch of little goodies from one of the, you know, um, 
main uh, kind of stores where you're going in and just buying a bunch of goodies for little ones, then make the big one and stuff it full of all kinds of things. Stick a stuffed animal in there because that fills it up real fast. But these are really great. Do a kitchen theme if you want to. Fill it up with all kinds of kitchen goodies or if you're going to make snacks for somebody or treats for somebody, you know, put it in a drawstring bag. If you've got something really special that you make, you know, then this would be a really great way for you to give that gift to. All right, what did I do in the process? I turned this right sides out, but what I want to show you is one thing that I recommend that you do. Where I did my corners, I, again, didn't stop and start. I stitched all the way to the edge. So what I want to do is go in and just trim some of that bulk out. And you can see my stitches there. It just trims out some of the bulk. And I would do this on all four of those corners. That's where the point comes together, the house part, the roof part comes together with the other. I did two, but again, it's up to you. If you wanna do all four of them, go ahead and do that. Now let's take a look and see what it is that we've gotten so far. So right here, you can see how this is gonna kinda look. Is that cute or what? I think any little boy or any girl that loves oceanography, animals, the beach, whatever, I think would be really in love with this. So let's take a look at this guy here. And you can see with this, I've chosen the same fabric. I really do like a different fabric to use just because I think that makes it pop. With the boy, I'm not sure it's that big of a deal that it matters that much. So I chose the same fabric, but I think it probably would look better with the drawstring done in this. All right, so what I've done with the drawstring was I just cut myself a strip. And you can see with this folded here, or with this, the seam here and basically folded and folded. I've got one that's about that long and I mentioned about one and a half. That's gonna give me enough room here to turn and enough room here to turn. I cut this on the fold. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this inside of here. And then I wanna cut this down. I just cut a rough kind of a strip and I wanna show you a couple different rulers that you have for your options. One of the rulers I really like is my set of two rulers. This is my, let me pull this over here. This is my tiny pouch ruler. And the tiny pouch ruler was one that Darla created. Two rulers that make these really cute tiny pouches, but they just have two rulers that are really great. And monkey, <laughs> monkey wants to see this ruler too. This is a two and a half inch ruler by 15 and a half. And it just really makes that two and a half is a really nice width. This is a two inch ruler in here. And this two inch is by 12 and a half. So I'm gonna cut two and a half inches. So this guy here, you can see I've got, for my regular size, 13 and a half inches. And 13 and a half is a pretty good length for this. All right, because I don't need to cut the length of this, I can place this wherever. But if I did want to cut this, this has half inch increments. And you can go in with one of the, sharp, uh, the metallic Sharpies and mark the ones that you want. So if you wanted to cut, you know, a 12 by two and a half, then you could set this, it's 15 and a half inches, you could set this at three and a half inches past so that you could cut. I'm just gonna simply go ahead and cut here and turn my ruler and cut along here. What that's giving me is now two and a half inches by my 13 and a half inches. All right, we're gonna press this down and I've got my finger press over here. You can do this at the iron if you want to. We don't really need to, but you can. I'm gonna press once, I'm gonna press again. Now the bone press, this finger press, this is Philip's stiletto, works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and right now stitch that down since I've just done the pressing. Now I really would go ahead and do chain piecing on this, but I wanna make sure I don't lose that nice crease. So we're gonna fold this down again. And y'all know you don't ever press on one of your cutting mats. That's just the quickest way to ruin a cutting mat. Wouldn't take long to get a warp in there, no matter whose mat it is. All right, we're gonna press this one and stitch that down as well. I'm gonna do the same thing to the next one. And then the other thing we're gonna do is fold this in half. I'm starting in the center here. 
And I'm just going to do a nice little press here and just kind of walk my way along. All right, you get the idea. You don't need to see me do all of this, so we'll speed this process up. And then I'll show you what we're going to do to be able to attach this before we do our lining. All right, so I've done the same thing on this other one, and then I also went ahead and stitched this down. So done a little bit of pressing. Again, this is a great tool for that. We're gonna stitch this right along the edge. So this is not going to show because this is gonna be inside my seam. But it does help hold everything together. All right, so monkey is on top of my project. As usual, it's always one, if not more, than one kitty on top of my projects. So I've got to get this out from under her. Monkey, come on, let me have it. Thank you, little girl. Yep. Now, if that were coal, we'd be cutting, and I would be very gingerly getting her to move because coal does not like, does not like to be told what to do. Monkey, on the other hand, she's pretty amenable. All right, so what am I doing? I am now with the outside fabric folding where my seam here and my seam here, where my sides are together, and this middle that's gonna be my featured fabric, basically they're lined up. You can pin here, but what I found works better is just doing a little bit of a snip, and I'm gonna come this way here. What that's gonna give me is just a little bit of a divot. Let's see if you can see that. Oh, there it is. Okay, right there. All right, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to line up the casings that I have on each side with the center point. So we need to do not only the little snip here, but we need to do the snip on the casing as well. So we're going to fold this in half, and we're going to do a little snip here too. All right, and Monkey wants to check out what I'm doing, so we're going to snip this. I'm, I have never cut a cat's tail, but I'm so afraid <laughs> that I might. I am very cautious with my kitties um, because I know it's sometimes just hair, but there's body parts underneath there too. Okay, there's that snip as well. So what are we going to do? We're going to line up the notch with the notch. And you can pin or clip. And when I talked about how long to make this strap, honestly, it's not that big of a deal as long as I have a gap on the side to be able to make sure that there's enough room to pull that drawstring. All right, and you can see where my center would be. Let me just show you right there. It's hard with that blue and blue, but that's how much distance I have here, and it'll be about the same on the other side, too. Did I finish pinning over here? No. Let's finish pinning that other side on the other side of that notch. All right, now we're going to do the other side. Line up those notches. This comes together really, really fast. And if you're making a bunch of these, assembly line cutting, assembly line sewing, well, assembly line pressing first, you know, getting that fusible on there. All that assembly line stuff that you do, you can knock these out really, really fast. 
and having fun with your fabrics. Again, grab those scraps. I'm gonna show you afterwards how we can do for special occasions using tea towels. You know, there are tea towels that have such great features on the fabrics. I really got into collecting tea towels when I was doing my towel toppers. So I've got a bunch of towels that are really, really cute. And I'll show you how to feature in the center here. Even though a towel may have something at the bottom, like the trim, the pom-poms, and no more fabric. So I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna stitch this down all the way around. We're gonna stitch this down all the way around. Now this is gonna go where my lining is gonna go, um, th my lining will be turned right sides in, and this is gonna be stuffed inside. So all we're doing here is tacking this down. I don't change my stitch length or anything, but I do stitch right along the edge, basically where this is, just because I wanna make sure that I don't have any of those stitches showing. All right, so I'm at the end of the first casing and I'm gonna to continue to sew across where I don't have anything to the next casing. And I'm gonna put my needle down and just make sure that that's laying nice and flat. I didn't pin right at the end there. The other thing too is you notice I have the table on. This would be a great time to take the table off. But because I haven't done the lining yet, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. We'll take it off a little bit later. And if you want to, you can back stitch at the beginning and ends of the casing. All right, so we have now got my casing. Now, one of the things you might want to do is when I'm pressing here, finger pressing, you can go in and do a little bit of top stitching. I don't wanna do that, not now. I wanna wait till my lining gets in there and you can choose to do top stitching or not. But this gives you an idea of what that looks like. And again, I think the casing, I'm gonna grab this from under monkey. I think the casing would look so much cuter with a contrasting fabric like that. So, you know, decisions that you make along the way based on the amount of fabric you have. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and stitch, and poor monkey does not wanna give me these fabrics. We're gonna go ahead and stitch, and we are gonna fast forward this. I'm gonna be, again, stitching roof to roof, roofs to roofs, and then when I get to where I'm sewing up the sides, we're gonna do three sides, except one side right about here to right about here, I'm gonna leave open. Now, based on your inner interfacing, this is SF101, I don't need to leave a really big opening. I could get away with, let's see, probably two and a half inches, maybe even two inches. But if I do have a heavier weight interfacing, like if I really wanted this to be a basket to stand all on its own and to not have any floppiness at all, but just have that cool drawstring at the top, and I were to use fusible foam, then I definitely would wanna give myself a little bit more of an opening, probably from about here to here. That way it makes it a little bit easier to stitch and or to turn. All right, so we're gonna speed this process up because you don't need to see me doing this. We've already done this once. I'll just, when we get to that opening area, then we'll slow down and you can see that. All right, so this is my last side. So I'm gonna stitch for a couple inches. And I'm just gonna back stitch a little bit. Maybe that was an inch and a half or so. And I'm gonna jump down, giving myself enough of an opening. And I'm just holding in place there versus back stitching. 
All right, so now we're ready to come to the table. And what are we gonna do? We are gonna trim these. And again, if you've got something heavier, fusible fleece, fusible foam, then trimming not only these here where my bottoms come together, but also the side seams would be really important. You may also want to press open. This is my turning area here. You can press that back if you want to. It's not going to make a huge difference by the time we actually get everything pressed at the ironing board and everything turned. Okay, so here we are. We have got our lining. We're going to take our outer fabric. We're going to place this inside and we're going to match up those seams. Now we've got the casing there, so it makes it a little bit harder, but not a big deal. So I'm looking for, there's a seam there, and I'm looking at my seam here. And again, in the opposite direction. And I'm putting a pin in the first one so that I know that when I sew it, it'll go down where I need it to be. That casing, I don't know if you saw, it was up like this, so we want to make sure to get that inside so that it doesn't get caught anywhere. And again, I'm going to turn my seam in one direction the one on top, and I'm going to pin. And again, that casing, we're tucking that inside. Whether you use a quarter of an inch seam allowance or three eighths inch seam allowance, whatever it is you're doing, just be consistent with your seam allowances. If you guys notice, I'm not always. Uh, part of it is just sewing on camera, but part of it is <laughs> I'm just not that great of a sewer. And I also don't take the time to do all of those things that make me a better sewer. All right, I'm gonna take the table off because I wanna go ahead and be able to stitch inside of here and not worry about anything getting caught. I'm I'm going to move my drawstring and all those things aside. I'm going to put those pins back though. So when I do get to the sewing machine, I can throw those pins over. Okay, so we are getting not only our lining and our outside fabrics together, but we're also getting that drawstring in there too. So I don't want to have a huge seam allowance. Um, a, again, a consistent with whatever it is you've been doing before. And just take your time and kind of reorganize everything if you need to as you're sewing. Because we left the turning area in the side, we don't have to worry about adjusting the top to do the turning there. You know, that's kind of one of those things that's one of the first things that people will notice if you haven't done a great job there. So it's easier to have that turning area inside your basket or your drawstring or whatever it is that you're making. Right now we're doing the drawstring bag. It's a nice twist on your typical drawstring. All right, I'm coming around to where I started sewing. And we'll just overlap just a little bit and back of the table. All right, let's get this out of the way. All right, so we're gonna look for that area where we left for turning right here and I'm gonna reach inside and I'm gonna start pulling. And again, SF101 makes it really easy, but I've done one of these projects with a fusible fleece and it was really easy as well. I think the bigger the drawstring, the more you wanna have a more sturdy interfacing. But again, do I want it to be a true drawstring bag that really does close up? All right, now notice what I'm doing here. I'm just pulling. What I wanna do is get this guy here, that drawstring part, just nice and open. You can top stitch if you want to. We've got the table off, so it would be a really good time for you to go ahead and top stitch, but I'm just basically doing this. Now what I really would do too is press here, press here. I'm gonna show you a way to press in just a minute, but you would take the time and do a little bit more pressing here. All right, I'm gonna find that opening area and 
And also, if you see threads, now's a good time to start uh, clipping those threads. All right, so here's my opening area here. I'm gonna push out this just to give myself enough to hold on to. And can you see when I pull, they just kind of naturally close. You can sew this by hand if you want to. You can use tape. I'm gonna just at the sewing machine, stitch that closed right along that edge. And a shorter stitch length is better here just to make sure that we really are getting everything. And I'm just holding it in place instead of back stitching. Trim the threads there. All right, so we're gonna tuck inside. And I'm pushing those four corners out, just kind of, again, finagling this bag. And it'll look worse before it looks better, but you'll see it start to take its shape. And again, remember how at the top I'm pulling a little bit, just pulling so that that casing really does start to open up where that seam is rather than have excess. All right. Now, if you've got a ham, hams are great for pressing inside of here. But what I'm gonna do is show you something else that I mentioned in one of my recent videos. I did the shorty mitt, and this is the shorty mitt. And the shorty mitt is really great to put on your hand and to put inside. And do you see how I'm just pressing here? What I'm doing is pressing right here backwards so that that casing is just now kind of locking it in place. And all I'm doing is focusing on that right now. You can see the inside here. I don't want my iron to fall off my table. You can see right there that inside, I haven't done anything there yet. All we're doing is working on the outside. I would be at my regular iron, a full size iron with this bag just because it's so much bigger. But with the small one, the small box bag, this is a great way to press. This little iron and the shorty mitt, whatever mitt you have inside of there works so, so well. All right, I'm just gonna give a little bit of a press. Now what I wanna do is kind of go from the outside and start doing the same thing here. You can see here, just pulling and pulling and pulling. See how that pressed in that crease in the wrong spot? See that, what I want to do is to be able to press. And that's where at your ironing board, really being able to go in and press really well, it's gonna make that look nice. I'm gonna take a minute to press this up a little bit, then we'll come back and look at that drawstring. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've given it a good press, and one of the things I want you to think about, too, is we've got four corners. So you're going to be pushing inside each corner from both the lining to the outer fabric just to make sure that they're nice and sharp and crisp. When we're looking at this from the bottom, that's part of what gives it that really cool shape. All right, I also want you to notice when we're looking at this here... That's the view that we have here, but I want you to notice on the side how much space there is. This space to me is a nice pleasing space, not only in looks, but then also in the way that we're gonna be working with the drawstring too. And again, I think for something like this, a shoestring would be really cute just to make it more boyish, but this was what I had. All right, so how do we figure how much we need? So when we're looking at the width from edge to edge, we basically want to do double that and then a little bit more, okay? So I'm going to look to see from here to here. Can you see right about, let's see if I can get my finger there, there to here, and then we want to double that because you figure it's going to be open. Let's take a look at this one. And you can see here, I pulled inside, but I've given myself a little bit extra there. All right, so from here to here, and I'm just gonna put my finger here and fold that in half. And then I'm gonna cut. And we need two of these. And if you've got anything that's gonna melt or fray or whatever, I shouldn't say melt, but if you have anything that's gonna fray, then grab some matches and melt those edges. All right, so I'm cutting myself a second one here too. 
and we can get rid of that so we don't get it confused with anything else. All right, so I've fed this through. I don't know if this is called a bodkin or whatever, but it's one of those cool tools. I was using a safety pin, so if you don't have one of these, you can use a safety pin. I found this really cool tool here that had two holes. This was so long for the big one, it was great until I pulled it out and this thing snapped. So, and Monkey wants to come over and see what it is that we're doing here too. All right, so we're gonna take this, this nice straight edge, this metal edge, and we're gonna go through, and I think this size probably works the best for all of these just because it's manageable. So again, you can use a safety pin. All right, so you can see I pulled that through here. I wanna make sure that I leave myself a tail here. And then I'm going to pull it through on the other side. Once I get through, I'll tie a knot. And again, if you've got ends that need to be melted, you know, with a match, a lighter, whatever, candle, you know, whatever it is that you have. And did I pull myself through? Yep. All right. So I pulled myself through over here. Busy watching monkey. All right. We're going to do that again. I know you wanted to see it again, didn't you? That was it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to give myself a little less here. And we'll look at the width of this casing. This is two and a half inches that I did here. I think on the um, Tula Pink, I did three inches on that one. All right, so I'm going to take that out. And we're going to tie a knot, just a plain old knot with our two ends. And again, you can get some matches to melt that down if you want to. Now you could add beads or dangles, all kinds of cute things on here if you wanted to. You know, add a, a bead, you know, tie a knot, add a bead, make this longer, add another knot there, totally up to you. All right, so here's my next one. Now this material, this stuff here is pretty thick. I did manage to get it through fairly easy with this guy here. All right, so we came in on this side, so we wanna come in on the opposite side. So where that loop is, that's where we want the knot to be. So we're gonna go in on this side now. And again, a shoestring um, works real well. Whatever it is you're doing, just remember we need to be able to get two layers in here. All right, so I'm gonna hold this over here while I'm pulling this and flip that over so I don't unthread myself again. And you know, it's a drawstring bag. Are you really gonna use the drawstring part of the bag? You know, is this gonna be a practical kind of thing or is this, again, a bag that's gonna sit open on shelves? I think, you know, having all of your fun tools that you use, your pretty stuff sitting in there, your favorite fabrics, whatever, having it sit there on the shelf for inspiration, I'd wanna leave that open, you know, instead of having it be in a drawstring bag. If you're going to the doctors and you've got a bunch of things you wanna work on, you know, then having that drawstring really is nice so you can have it, not worry about anything falling out. Okay, so now I've got my knots and my knots, and all we want to do is even that out. And you can see I've left a little bit longer, so now I can tie that up. And let's plop that down so you can see what that looks like. From the top, it's a really cute drawstring bag. has nothing in it right now, but let's take a look at the bottom. I mean, is that adorable or what? You know, if you put stuff in here, you know, think how much fun that would be as a gift. So this right there, looking at it that way, really, really cute. But looking at it this way too, really, really cute and practical, stuffed full of all kinds of goodies. All right, so a twist on the drawstring bag. I think this is a really fun way to take advantage of another project done with the box bag templates. This was done with the regular box bag. Same thing as this one. Remember the little one that I did for the doggy treats, the doggy whatever. If it's a gift card to one of the dog stores, somebody that just got a dog or, you know, whatever, this is the small size right here. This can be done, again, all kinds of goodies that you can stick in there. If you're selling things at a farmer's market and you want to give yourself an up on your competition, you know, and you've done something special, then stick them in the little bag and you can afford to charge several more dollars for that. I'm going to grab the big one. The big one, again, I debated on whether I would like this big one or not because it's so big, but I really think having this full 
of all of your goodies. You know, I mean, how cool is that? This fabric here is more like a canvas material. This is a cotton fabric. I used a fusible fleece, lightweight fleece on both of these, just because I wanted it to give more sturdiness. And I think it's going to be a cat bed now for a monkey. So what I want to do is talk about fussy cutting. Oh, there's monkey. All right. So what I want to do is talk about uh, fussy cutting with this. No fussy cutting here. Not really a lot of fussy cutting here, but I did do it. I didn't do any fussy cutting here, but this is a directional fabric, so we want to look at that. But I did fussy cut here, and I did fussy cut here. So I want to show you how to fussy cut, and I also want to show you a couple options for you um, to take advantage of not only fabrics that you have, but different um, materials too. So here's the fussy cut frame. Here's the fussy cut frame, and here's the fussy cut frame too. And let's see if we can keep Monkey from not getting too much involved in what it is I'm doing. I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way because I want you to be able to see what it is we're doing. Okay, fusible fleece, by the way. This is my fusible fleece. It's a little bit heavier weight. And actually, this isn't fusible fleece. This is my fusible fleece right here. You can see how that's a little bit thinner. SF-101, and then this is my fusible foam. So, or my... um. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it in the notes. So make sure you go read the notes on this. This is a little bit heavier weight, gives a little bit more sturdiness. This is the fusible um, fleece and then SF-101. This is what I did the largest one from. This is what, believe it or not, that I did this one with. And then I used two layers of this for this. Even though this was big, I really wanted it to not have any substance to this so it would um, be able to be drawn up easily. So use whatever materials you have, play with them. The only one I really wouldn't recommend is um, a batting. I don't think batting is going to give you any substance at all. Okay, so let's take a look and see. This right here, I've got Easter on the brain because it's that time of year. So if I'm looking at doing something like this, can you see how, yeah, this is perfect for right here. But I have nothing down here. That's okay. When we're looking at right where this is, that's where my seam is going to be. So when I cut this, I want to go ahead and piece some of this fabric to this. And if you want to, you can go ahead and do a line with any kind of a, a marking pen or anything like that to where this, remember my drawstring is going to be up here and I have my seam allowance up here, quarter inch seam allowance. So you decide. We're basically looking at this is my design. I'm going to take that corner and that corner there. I'm going to say that's my design. So you can see I'm too close on this side, not far enough over here. So I'm going to scoot this over for placement. If you need to fold this in half and put a mark on there so you can decide where it is. You can also do a little mark here too on this template. It's too small to have a mark there. So take this to your mat or measuring tape and find the center of it and put a mark. So that way your marks line up and you can decide where it is you want to go. So a tea towel like this, it gives you something like this. This would be really cute, I think, right in the middle of this. And then find some coordinating fabric that would work really well over here. So let me show you some coordinating fabrics. This is a coordinating fabric, but it's a bunny. I want to flip it over because this is a coordinating fabric. So do you see how cute that would be for this side here? And the same thing over here. So I could have this where I'm cutting my we look at this, you can see I've got plenty of real estate when I fold this in half. Don't cut that part, but fold this in half and you can see how there's plenty of real estate from this fabric to give me my sides here and here. And then you decide, do I want to do <laughs> just a solid pink on the back side or to do something else, some coordinating fabric on the back side too? A coordinating fabric like this if you want to. You can also do, instead of something like this, you can do a coordinating fabric here and here, make this your lining. When you start playing with these things as your design element, there's so many cool options for you. If you look at this, I don't have any direction on here. So if I've got one character that I really love that I want to feature, if these are my guys that I want to feature, or if this is my guy that I want to feature, whatever it is that you want to do, 
place that out and you can see I don't have enough fabric here if I wanted him in the center. So you decide what it is that you want. By placing this and looking, this is your viewfinder basically. That's what we're looking at here. I love tea towels like this and this isn't a tea towel, this is a placemat. And you can see how huge this guy is. He's way too big for this. But he's not too big for my large. So when I look at this, again, I could cut my sides and stitch the bottom down because that's going to be basically a seam right here. You can imagine you've got a seam right here. So I'm looking at this here and then my seam is for this part here. And you can do coordinating fabrics if you want to. But do you see what I have right here? When I look at this, Again, I may even want to unstitch some of this and unstitch some of this so it gives me some real estate. But look how cute that would be. That right there in the center of a bag like this. And I did debate about making this an Easter basket and putting this in the center. Let me show you. And the problem is the fabric that I like is underneath. So this makes it a much more subtle basket, but this would be a really cute Easter basket. If you've got the grandkids coming over and you wanted to have a basket set up not only of treats, but of toys and maybe pajamas that you bought or made them, think about how cute that would be right here. So this in the center, you can see how I'm gonna lose a little bit of his ears. This is gonna be right on the seam here. So this, when we're using that frame, that fussy cut frame, I can see how well that's gonna work or if it won't work. Remember on the other fabric that I had, let's see if I can find it. The other towel that I had, oh this. And I said that won't work. This right here, it won't work for the regular size, but when I look to see here, it'll work here. I definitely am not gonna have any bunny, the rest of the bunny there. But again, if I stitched some of this down below here and had that as my seam, again, think about him in the center and look how cute that would be. So the idea of playing with tea towels, playing with other materials, table runners, placemats, those kinds of things, and using them as your fabric, knowing I don't have fabric down here for this, but I can piece that. And I did show that process in one of the other videos, so when you look to see, uh, you'll be able to see, I think it was on the DVD, Boxes, Baskets, Bags, Oh My. All right, I wanna show you when I use the Tula Pink Fabric, how I did that because I actually do want to cut one for you so you can see how that's done. And I'm upside down. And you can do upside down, you just have to kind of in your head think, all right, mathematically or directionally or whatever, wherever it is. You can see here, if I wanted to center this, you can see how that's not going to work. And I think what I'm going to do is turn it directionally so you all can see. It's not just me, it's you guys too, so you can see what it is we're looking for. I want to keep all of my fabric intact because there's fabric here that I'll use for other projects. Press your fabric first, unlike me, and if you want to, you can press on some of the fusible if you want. But notice how I'm just kind of bunching this up and I'm looking to see my direction space or my space over here and my space over here. If you think about where this is really centered, the sewing machine is a little bit differently centered than that, but you decide where it is that you want. And again, this down here is my bottom. Where's that ruler? I like using a ruler that just kind of cuts off and gives me, here's what it is I'm really gonna see. Do you see how that's what I get? And when I've got that here, and again, if I press that, you know, first, and I would get better success with this. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend that I pressed it. I'm going to place this inside here. This is my fussy cut frame. This is my window for me to choose. Do I like the placement? And again, that crease is bothering me, but you get it. So imagine that I pressed it. This goes inside. What am I going to do? I'm going to make sure that's in nice and, and straight, and then I pop off the fussy cut frame, and I'm going to grab my rotary cutter, and we're going to cut around. And let me find the rotary cutter. And I said I'm going to cut around. So what am I doing? I'm going to cut here. I'm going to cut here. I don't want to cut into any more fabric than I have to. So when I get to here, I'm making sure that my hand is on nice and sturdy. 
Now I'm going to lift up the fabric, just take my time to make sure that I got everything. Before I pull this, I'm just going to take a minute and make sure that I got everything. All right, so I've got all of that, and then I'm going to move this. I'm going to look to see, did I do a good job here? Do I do, did I do a good job here? If I'm cutting right-handed versus left-handed, you know, there were two sides that I cut right-handed. And do you see how it just gave me a little bit more off of there? What that allows me to do is use my fussy cut frame to get exactly what it is that I want. That gives me my center. Same thing with this for the two sides. Imagine how cool this would look if I had it, let's get all this out. If I had the bag like this. I mean, is that cool or what? You know, that's a really cool look too, where this is just kind of the accent. So you play with that. This would be the drawstring all the way across. This is where it would be coming out on the sides. So I can't go fix that. I can't change that unless I take this all apart and change the drawstring. So do your auditioning with your fabric first. Uh, let me see if there are other fabrics over here that I wanted to show you. Um, some of the fabrics, again, directionally, if you're gonna cut yourself the four boxes like I did earlier, then if you're using a fabric that's already folded, I have one, two, and I'm gonna fold this down to the length of my template. You can imagine what's gonna happen if I cut this. I've got some of them that are gonna be upside down and some of them that are gonna be right. So directional fabrics do make a difference. That's why you're better off to go ahead and cut two at a time. And again, if you want to fussy cut these guys, use that fussy cut frame. I've got two layers right now. What I need to do is separate and give myself just one layer and decide, do I want the fox in the center? Do I want the bunny rabbit in the center? You're going to lose based on your seam allowance. So you decide where it is that you want it to be. So this allows you to choose what it is you want. So play around. What's nice about this guy one, two, three, four fabrics is what I used on the, the drawstring part of the bag itself. And then five, this guy here, because it doesn't match any of those fabrics. So I used five different fabrics on here. But you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> you, you know, you could play around and have each one of these a different fabric. So if you like a scrappy look, this is a really great project to do for this. All right, guys, so this was a fun drawstring with a twist. Not your typical drawstring. I think this is going to be one of those cool things that if you've made drawstring bags and you've given them as gifts, it's the gift inside that really matters more. This is such a great gift all by itself. And then the gift is just kind of like a bonus. So this is done with my box bag template. You've got the regular size. You've got the large size. Somewhere in all this mess, I've got the small size. This is the fussy cut frame for the regular, uh, for the small. This is the fussy cut frame for the large. And again, somewhere in all my mess here, I've got my fussy cut frame for the regular size. You can buy them separately. You can buy them as a bundle. There are lots of different ways to use this. If you know Linda McGeehe from Gees, G-H-E-E-S, she actually wrote a couple patterns using the box bag templates, and it's called the L-Bag and the L-Bag version 1 and version 2. Why is it the L-Bag? Linda and Linda. Linda McGeehe and Linda Winter. So there are all kinds of things out there that have been done with the box bag. It's been around forever, but I wanted you to, to see one more project that you could do using this same template. If you've got it in your stash, you're good to go. Just pull it out and start having fun with all of your fabrics, those scraps that you have. And by the way, clothes are great for this too. So clothes that drape don't need an interfacing and then it really does become a drawstring bag. So you can have a whole lot of fun with this. You can find this on my website if you don't have this by going to winterdesigns.com and then click on products and templates. Under products and templates, there's a search box. So in that search box, we're gonna type in two words, box box bag. When you type in box bag, you're going to get a lot of different results that pop up. I do a lot of box bottoms, so you're going to see projects with those. The box that square it places, that's another really 
popular set of tools. The Boxes, Baskets, Bags bundle that has a DVD in there that we filmed quite a while ago. And then now are the box bag bundles. There are lots of bundles. You can buy the template by itself, the regular size, the large size, the small size. You can buy the bundles. You can buy the fussy cut frames all by themselves. There are the patterns that I talked about with Linda McGee. So you've got lots of options. What I want you to think about is this is such a unique template in that it gives you so many options. Again, a box and a bag. This is from the small, this is from the large, but you can make these same projects in a larger size. If you've seen my blue jeans that I've done with the regular box bag, that's one of my favorite projects to do and give as a baby gift. This large in the small, if you make the bag the same style with the box bottoms and this same shape, you can see how it turns into that house shape basically. If you do this in the small, it's a great gift card holder if you're gonna give somebody money or gift card or a check or whatever. So we've got the box and we've got the bag. But then today I wanted to show you a nice twist on the drawstring bag. Again, the bottom becomes a fun take on the boxed bottom. Instead of looking at a square, we're looking at kind of a, you know, a nice little pointed on the sides. This is the small, this is the regular drawn up, this is the regular open, and then this is the large. Play with your interfacings, play with your fabrics, fussy cut, all kinds of fun things. And I really think this is gonna be one that you will enjoy. Monkey sure does. Thanks for watching.